Hello and welcome to this Endpoint Assessment Webinar for Level 6 Building Services Design Engineering. In the course of this webinar, I'll be giving an overview of the Engineering Practice Report, what the report will need to include, and the key competencies that you'll need to address when writing the report. The Engineering Practice Report, or EPR, is a separate document that you'll need to submit with Endpoint Assessment and it gives a general overview of the type of work and training you have undertaken, where you talk about the projects you have been involved in, the key features of these projects, and the experiences you have gained. It should be a reflective account of your work experience to date. It should be between 4,500 and 5,000 words long. It should include a title page which states your word count, and it should be written in the first person. When writing your engineering practice report, it's key that you address each one of the KSB competencies, that is the knowledge, skills and behaviours. There are nine core knowledge points that will be assessed. There are eight core skills that will be assessed. And there are seven core behaviours that will be assessed. For the presentation, you will need to address a certain number of the criteria. However, for your engineering practice report, you'll need to address every point. When it comes to marking you against these KSBs, you'll either be given a pass or a fail, so make sure in your report you do reference them all. Let's now look at some of the core knowledge that needs to be assessed at this grade. What I will do is highlight a couple of them from each of the KSBs and go through them using some examples from the reports that are up on the SIBC website. This will give you a better idea of what you need to include when writing the report, but I should stress at this point that you really should read the KSB criteria in more detail before starting. So, with that in mind, let's look at K1 and K2 in a bit more detail. As you can see, you would need to demonstrate your understanding of K1 as part of both your presentation and engineering practice report, which informs the interview. Where as for K2, you only need to provide evidence in your engineering practice report and at the subsequent interview. So K1 is all about engineering principles. You will need to address some of the engineering theory and techniques you have picked up during the course of your apprenticeship and how you have demonstrated these techniques. So for example, how you have engaged in formal learning to broaden your knowledge, what new techniques you have learnt, and what you have done to reinforce that knowledge. And looking at some of the evidence examples here, you can show how you have read technical journals, attended courses and seminars, established a clear stakeholder or project brief, defined problems, used software or tabulated data in developing solutions, or identified through project or operational involvement areas for personal development. And this is a good example for K1. It's a bit lengthy, so I won't read it out. I would recommend you just pause the presentation here while you read through it. As you can see, there's talk of engineering theory here. There's also talk of self-improvement and evidence of self-learning through on-site experience. So how could you approach K2? K2 is asking about how you have implemented digital solutions. Think about your core experiences of implementing digital solutions and use an example to explain what you did. And here are some evidence examples which might help you out. And here's another evidence example of K2, where the objective was set and a solution was reached. Uh, again, I would recommend you to pause the presentation here while you read through the example. Now, let's move on to S1, the first of the core skills you'll need to address. S1 is asking you to look at how you use a sound evidence-based approach to problem solving to develop building services engineering design solutions which maintain and enhance the quality of the environment and community to meet client financial and safety objectives. So S1 is all about your approach to problem solving. You should also be thinking about continuous improvement, something you've done which enhances the environment or contributes to sustainable development. Again, think back across all the work and training you have undertaken and pick a relevant example. 
This is a good example of an evidence-based approach to problem solving. The problem has been described in detail and there's good detail as to how the problem was solved as well. It's also explained later how there was an initial upfront cost which was balanced out by long-term savings and how the solution didn't only increase productivity but also safety too. So all in all, a good example. Again, draw from your own experiences to come up with something you have done in evidence. And now I'll move on to core behaviours. There are seven core behaviours in total, and while you'll only need to demonstrate three of them during your presentation, you will need to demonstrate all seven of them in the written report and at the subsequent interview. As you'll start to realise when you write your EPR, some of these competencies, particularly with these behaviours, are quite similar to each other. For example, if you look at B1 and B4, which we'll do briefly now, you could draw on an example which brings both of them together. So B1 and B4 are both about how you conduct yourself at work and your working relationship to others. You can think about any events that you have organised, such as for a charity event, or even any work-based training that you might have had. You might want to think about a good working relationship that you have with someone and why it works so well or how it was initiated. If you speak more than one language, maybe that has helped out in the situation, or otherwise you might be learning another language which could reflect positively on your personal and social skills. I won't include an example here, but you should have plenty to draw on over the course of your apprenticeship from your own experience to come up with an example. And now I'll move on to talk briefly about the interview. Your engineering practice report will be submitted at least three weeks before your interview date. On the day of your interview, just make sure you're well prepared, that everything is working and that you're in a quiet, well lit and comfortable environment. Have an original piece of ID ready to present because the interview can't go ahead without this. And there will also be two trained and experienced SIPSI assessors conducting the assessment. On occasion, there may be an observer present, but they will not be there to assess you. On the day of your interview, after a brief introduction in which you'll produce your ID, you'll then give your 15 to 20 minute PowerPoint presentation. This will be followed by a 15 to 20 minute question and answer session. Next, you'll have your structured interview, which is informed by the engineering practice report. This will last between 40 and 50 minutes. The questions will be focused on your engineering practice report, so there shouldn't be any surprises for you. It's all work that you've carried out. Please refer to the SIPSI website for information regarding a more generalised overview of the endpoint assessment and the other requirements. So, some final comments to summarise. To pass endpoint assessment, you must address the knowledge, skills and behaviours set in a level 6 standard for building services design engineering. For the engineering practice report, you need to address every competency in the standard. So bearing this in mind, please do review all the documentation relevant to your level of study prior to submitting your presentation and report. And also make sure you have read and understood the SIPSI code of conduct and be prepared to discuss your understanding of it in the interview. You'll find out the result within six weeks of your interview. Your official certificates will come from the Education, Skills and Funding Agency, the ESFA. The reason why it takes six weeks is because it goes to a member registration panel who review every assessment. And finally, this is a link to the Level 6 standard, which you can find through the SIPSI website. And finally, all that's left to say is good luck. Remember that there are other resources online to help you out and that the membership team can help you with any general queries. You can email them into SIPSI using the below email address. Please also visit our website to take a look at our other webinar, which looks at the wider application process for endpoint assessment. I hope you found this presentation helpful and all the best with your application.